Welcome to this evening's TF Together. I'm Helen Fowler from the Florentine and I'm delighted to present this wine tasting in, par in partnership with the Chianti Rufina Consortium. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm just going to say a little bit about the Chianti Rufina wine region. So it's known as the highest Chianti. Uh, Chianti Rufina is a wine region about 20 kilometers northeast of Florence and it covers the towns of Rufina, Pontasieve, which I'm proud to call my adopted home, Londa, Pelago, and Di Comano. Here you can see in relation uh, to, to Florence and to the rest of Tuscany where the Rufina area is and also compared to the other Chianti subzones. Documentation shows that the earliest winemaking uh, in the Rufina area dates to the early 15th century and we also know that official documentation, recognition of the wine area, was granted in an edit of the Grand Duke of Tuscany, in which Cosimo III, on the 24th of September 1760, 1716, classified the wine produced in this area, and you'll see it mentioned here as Pomino. Um, he classified it as being amongst the four finest in the whole of Tuscany, alongside Chianti, Camignano, and Valdano di Sopra. Florence lovers might well have marveled at the sight of the carromato, the crazy cart, as it's translated. On the fourth Sunday in September, the carriage skill skillfully arranged with a pyramid of straw flasks containing Chianti Rufina wine leaves the town of Rufina and it's towed by two white oxen and offered to the city, or rather the Signoria, the Lords of Florence. The wine is blessed outside Florence Cathedral uh, and then it reaches the Palazzo Vecchio. And we hope, uh, if, you're, if you're Florence lovers who don't actually live here, that maybe next year you'll be able to come over and head to Rufina for the week-long uh, festival, the Baco Artigiano, which is held in September. Chianti Rufina is the smallest of the seven Chianti subzones, covering a service area of about 12,000 hectares, and 750 of those are registered as being under vine. Here you'll see the map of the various wineries that make up that area. Out of a total of 22 growers currently producing Chianti Rufina, 18 are members of the Chianti Rufino Consortium, which was founded back in 1980. Like all Chianti, Rufino, like all Chianti wines, Sangiovese is the primary grape. Joining us tonight is wine educator and sommelier uh, Emily O'Hare, who's based in Siena. Hello, Emily. Thank you Hi, for joining. Helen. Cheers. And uh, Emily will be tasting the wines and letting us know her thoughts. Also joining us are four Chianti Rufina wineries, two on the right bank of the River Sierve, if we look down river. Um, Colognole, whose owner is Cesare Codonunziante, and he's also the president of the consortium. Thank you for joining us, Cesare, this evening. My, my pleasure, Helen. <laughs> and also on the right bank is Grignano, and we have Tommaso Mirami. Hello. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> uh, we also have two wineries, two Chianti Rufino wineries on the left bank, Selva Piana, Frederico, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and Frascoli. And Cosimo is joining us for Frascoli Winery. Um, all of the wineries will be presenting an Anata, so a, a latest release wine and a reserva wine, a slightly older, slightly aged wine. So let's start with the right bank. Um, Cesare, maybe if you could tell us a little bit about your, your family's winery, Colonialin. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine, for your introduction. Thank you for all your um, friends to be here and to join us for this uh, wine tasting uh, remote wine tasting which is quite unusual for us because we like to drink the wine in front of people but obviously this is the situation that we, we like to go through and um, let me tell you a few words about uh, the winery before tasting the wine uh, the winery belongs uh, to my family since uh, five generations um, it has been bought by my grand grandfather in uh, 1892 uh, at the time, he was the senator of uh, the Kingdom of Italy. And when the kingdom moved uh, from uh, Torino to Roma uh, uh, in 
1871, and then uh, uh, before that, he stays five years in Florence as a state capital. At that time, so all the senators were here in Florence, and uh, uh, my grandfather, my grand grandfather, was there, and so he get in the font of Tuscany, he gets in love with all this, the, the hills of Tuscany, and he decided to bought, uh, at the time was not really a winery, was a larger state with lots of wood, and at the time wood was very important for heating, for everything, um, and, and, they, and they bought this, uh, this winery, the, the, this estate. Um, after that, I would say that it has been mainly my, my grandfather, whose name uh, was Cesare as mine, uh, to become uh, um, a real vineyard grower. Uh, he was very fond about wine and he started planting vineyards in, the, uh, in all the hills here in a very in a more professional way compared to what was done before. We still have some uh, um, vintages in late uh, uh, 800s and beginning of the uh, 19th century. Uh, stating that the wine was, uh, 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 was very good and was uh, drinking by the king of Italy in uh, in Rome at the time. So this was just to, to say that uh, the commitment to uh, viticulture and the commitment to Sangiovese has been always has been always uh, uh, driving our uh, choices, our uh, focus in the in all the uh, the last century. And um, in the early 60s and 70s, uh, uh, the Chianti from the Spalletti family who has been one of the first to join the United States uh, with the straw basket uh, bottle, as, uh, as most of you know. So this commitment uh, now, come to nowadays, uh, uh, has been restarting in the 90s when uh, my mother Together with my brother, they started replanting all the vineyards that we have uh, here in the hills of, uh, of Polonia and down to the river in the uh, close to Rufina. And they have all been replanted with the new clones uh, selected by the, the project of uh, Chianti 2000. And uh, um, so with the all new ideas about winemaking, either in the cellar and, but even more, I would say, in the vineyard. The, ba mm -hmm. the main difference in the last 20, 30 years uh, has been in the vineyards, the culture of the vineyards, uh, the, the, the knowledge about uh, uh, growing uh, Sangiovese in a different way and uh, uh, paying attention to quantities, to uh, feed director, yield, uh, racking process, and all these kinds of stuff. Obviously, in the cellar, you need to have people that is able to uh, transform all these inputs from the countryside into the wine. Uh, so this is another big effort, important effort, that means that you need to have a, um, a technological cellar more than you can, uh, which is obviously is a, is a pain because it is very uh, <laughs> difficult to follow all the new uh, technologies that you have. Uh, so it's a, it's a process and obviously we are following this process. And for many years we've been uh, uh, selecting the different vineyards of Sangiovese in order to, uh, to arrive to the uh, pure Sangiovese as much as possible. And uh, this process has it, been leading uh, us and many other producers to produce single vineyard selection, which yeah. I think is one of the most challenging uh, uh, choice that a producer can do in his uh, estate. Yeah, it's a, it's a high risk strategy once you start producing single vineyard wines and uh, you create that, that, that part of the market which sort of begins to expect to that level of, of winemaking. But it's, it's wonderful that the region is pushing for quality. Cesare, you have, uh, I have a I have your 2016 here. Would you like to present your your two wines this evening and tell us about them? Exactly, me too. I have the, <laughs> the 2016. Um, some producers already have some re more recent vintages. Um, uh, we always uh, we are one of the uh, of the northern state uh, in the in the consortium, uh, so we always come a little later to the market. 
16 is for us has been a, a very important vintage, um, probably not as bold as the 2015, uh, but I would say uh, even more uh, drinkable and uh, balanced than 2015. Uh, I will probably, over now, I will drink 2016 and I will uh, keep in the cellar the 2015 as my, as my kind of, of drinking, let's say. Um, so obviously I, I will join your, the, <laughs> the, the, the tasting. Okay. Maybe, maybe while you're tasting, and then we'll get Emily to, to come back to us in a little while. Maybe, uh, Tommaso, uh, maybe you could explain to us a little bit about Grignano, uh, given that you're both, you, you're both having in common that you're on the, the right bank of the River Sierra. Exactly. So the Grignano Villa uh, and its land were born in the 15th century under uh, the Medici family. My family uh, bought, thanks to my grandfather Fabio Inchirami, the, the wine estate uh, during the 70s. Uh, the, property, the property nowadays covers 600 hectares with, with 50 hectares of uh, wine yard. We produce also uh, extra virgin olive oil and we keep uh, going all the production that is uh, organic. Uh, the estate nowadays uh, uh, is also characterized by uh, not only the villa, the villa of Grignano, but also with the 40 farms that are located all around the state. Since uh, 2018, uh, I, when I joined the, the, the winery, my idea was to study the San Jovis of uh, Rufin. As you can imagine, uh, all around Tuscany, the, the prince of the grape uh, is the San Jovis. And the Rufunia, for sure, is a unique uh, land with uh, fantastic terroir, fantastic soil. So my idea was to study San Jovis in all the different aspects of this grape. For this reason, uh, today we're going to taste two wine that are the Chianti Rufina 2017, uh, so is our entry level Chianti, and our Reserva Poggio Gualtieri, that is our uh, single vineyard. But for sure, my uh, idea behind the San Giovese was also to study not only the vinification in black, but also in white. For this reason, I also did the experiment uh, such as the white San Giovese or the San Giovese in, uh, in, uh, in rosé. Uh, uh, right now, um, I, I, I want to keep uh, all the production, not only because I, I study business, I, I did other studies in my, my life, but I have a team of, uh, uh, of professional people like our uh, enologist uh, Stefano Chioccioli that help uh, uh, me uh, to, uh, to do all the, uh, all the things, all the wine that uh, we want to ex experiment day by day. And today, as I told you, we're going to taste this wine, that is uh, the Ritratto uh, del, del Cardinale, 2017. Uh, all the production that we do is organic. We are organic since more than 15 years. And, and also the, the Chianti Rufina, Riserva Poggio Gualtieri, that is uh, two uh, hectares of vineyard, that uh, is for the characteristic of the soil, the characteristic of the disposition is our uh, crew. Uh, the first bottle of uh, Poggio Gualtieri was done by my father, Giovanni Ghirami, and the enologist Franco Bernabé in, in 1997. And so for me, it's important also to, to keep all the tradition uh, of my grandfather, of my father, and all of my family in also this wine. For sure, my family uh, was not uh, at the beginning in the, in the wine business because my family in the, in the textile and fashion business. And so I'm the first one that is running the, the wine business also because I, I, really, I really love uh, all this uh, uh, these world. And also because I want to promote uh, something that uh, belongs to our history, to our, to our Tuscan history uh, worldwide. Uh, it's really wonderful to hear you speak. Um, and as you know, I'm, I'm very fond of, of Grignano and Cologne, you know. They're uh, on, on my side of the river, so to speak. And, uh, and Grignano is somewhere that I often jog past in the hills. So both are very bucolic and very beautiful spots. Emily, maybe you could taste these wines from the right bank and tell with, us what-, what With pleasure, thinking. with pleasure. Similarities think, and differences, maybe. I think it'd be really nice to start with the um, Grignano because uh, with the 17, um, it's, and then move on to the Colognole. There's a really, there's a lovely um, progression between the two wines. Um, equally um, fantastic in terms of 
quality, but there's just different, different things you can notice according to the, the different uh, vintages, so the 17 and the 16, completely different uh, experiences, I understand. Um, I, I know I know more, perhaps a little bit more about the, the experience in Siena, because I live in the Colisonese, so I'm in the, a different Chianti subzone down here. Um, but I understand 17 was a, a very warm vintage across Tuscany, across Italy, across Europe. Um, and I, I find there's a wonderful exuberance in the in the 17th and there's a, a the 16 is somewhat more um mellow and um and meaty so it's quite fun to start with the with the the Grignana 17 and um Tommaso was that that was a hot vintage for you was it a challenging vintage or actually you you didn't struggle that was the heat was okay yeah 2017 uh, I was not already in the winery but in any case uh, the team was for sure a really tough year because it was uh, really hot summer, uh, and so uh, the overall quality of the Sangiovese for me has been great, but we decided to, to use also the the, the, vara, uh, the, the the wine of the Sangiovese, of the Riserva for the Annata. So, uh, so we it's decided, a good year. Yeah, so, so we, we, decided, one, one. We, we decided to select the best uh, Sangiovese of 2017 and use it for the entry-level Chianti that we are tasting right now. And uh, we, uh, we will not do the, the Riserva and we will jump to the Riserva 2018. So for Grignano and Poggio Gualtieri, we, uh, we will not be available the Riserva 2017 to do the fact the quality was good, but was not enough good to make the Riserva. And for this reason, the best San Giovese that we use, um, we, we made the, the entry level Chianti. No, it tastes, it, you can, it's, it's really excellent. There's evidently um, some really special fruit going into that that 17. What I what I really loved, especially it's a nice one to kick off with because you almost feel like you can, you, you can smell that you're close to Florence because we were just having a chat before because I was, I was wondering what the emblem of Florence was because I could smell iris in the, um, in the wine. It's got a lovely purple, a purple aroma, even though the wine is, is bright red, it's got, it smells of purple flowers. And um, sadly, I'm not one of those people, I can't remember the name for it, when you can smell colors. Um, but I, I get this wonderful aroma of, of purple. And, um, and then from that, you think of all things purple and black, like black cherry, it's got a, a lovely warmth and, and richness on the, on the nose. And it's really um, clean washing, the smell of clean washing, which maybe is attached to iris. I don't know if, if washing powder is, they use the smell of iris, but it's got a lovely clean uh, aroma. And then what I what I, I read a quote I think my, maybe when uh, whether it was a book on Chianti Rufina that said it's the most vertical Sangiovese in the in the Tuscan uh, Chianti universe and I think that's so accurate even in a warm vintage like this when you taste the wine it's really a, a wonderful kind of verticality almost a kind of a pointed quality to it it's not rich and and heavy and mouth filling and flabby it's got a really um, pert and, and crisp and, and pointed um, way of, of, of moving in the mouth and, and works beautifully with food. Sadly, we don't have any, but I imagine it's a great match for, for, for Tuscan, for Tuscan yeah, food. For Tuscan dishes, for Tuscan dishes, uh, perfect. All the candy roofing are, are perfect in our uh, traditional dishes of Tuscan. But for sure, the, um, right now we are tasting the 2017, but my suggestion is also going back with the vintage the bottle, because the main characteristic of our area is the, um, is the possibility to taste 20 years bottle, 30 years bottle that are still alive. So uh, the San Giovese of Rufina, the main characteristic is, is, that, is that the longevity, that is something that we must, must underline. Yeah, no, it's 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 evident that it, it can go for such a long time. But what I really enjoy about all the wines is that you can drink them now. But I I understand they can last for yeah for a really a really long time. And even a vintage such as seventeen, which was quite a warm one, you you can still it still has the the material to to go um to go a long distance. So it's uh, yeah it's a really um, pleasurable wine to drink. And I really recommend to everybody at home when you try this wine to really move it around in the mouth and fill up the sides of the, the tongue and the gums because it's really uh, um, active and um, energizing to, to drink. So it's, uh, yeah, really complimentary. Speaking of that, encouraging our, our viewers to, to 
partake in Canty Rufina at home. Um, there is the possibility of um, what the consortium has done is, is put together these wine boxes so that you can try both the, the right bank and the left bank, both the Anata and the Reservas. So you can have this experience actually uh, delivered to you where you are. So uh, we'll, leave, we'll leave that, that up there for a second. Emily, would you like to comment on, on Colombia? Let's see. So it's, yeah, it's really exciting to try um, a 26. This is your, I love that's your your current release is the 2016 Cesare. That's really cool. And such yeah. a great vintage too. So do, do they go into Botte to, or they're in, in cement tanks? How do you keep them all this time? Uh, actually, they do both. Uh, obviously, now 16 is, uh, let's say, we will come out with 17 uh, in, uh, on January. So we are just uh, at, the, at the end of the, the 16. Uh, but I think it's a very drinkable vintage, and the aging is in both woods, large Slavonian woods, and cement. Mm. Um, it, it depends a little bit, obviously, in the vintage and how long shall we keep in the woods, but generally it makes at least uh, uh, 12 months in woods, sometimes yeah. a little longer, as it was for 15, because tannins in 15 was a little bolder, so we, 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 uh, it was necessary to keep it a little longer. Uh, but then it's, it's, uh, it's uh, one year, one year, and then keep it in liquid and stainless steel and cement, and then we uh, we we bottle and we make at least at least uh, one year, one year and a half of of uh, um, refinement in the bottle in order to get a little more gentle. Because one, as uh, uh, Thomas was saying before, one of our uh, important issues in the roofing of simplicity is the possibility, the, the longevity of the wine. So sometimes you need to stick the bottle for wine to get a little more refined and white the, the, the complexity of the uh, acidity and the structure and the alcohol doesn't fit get as well as uh, if it stays at least one month, one year in the bottle. It's very yeah. important to get the wine more elegant because the elegance is one of the other important issues in this area. That seems to be the, the theme uh, through all the wines, this elegance, perhaps because of that uh, vicinity to the, the Apennines and that cool uh, temperature. I understand that in Rufina, you, you even harvest a week later than everywhere else, pretty much in, in, in Chianti, because you have these cooler temperatures overall. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly correct, Emily. I think that's also this one is very important because it gives the possibility uh, harvesting a little later uh, and uh, also because of the uh, night temperature being a little lower, uh, this allows the, uh, the, the, the process of working to delay a little more and to get a little more time also for the tannins to be combined. It happened sometimes also, it was in 2003, 2011, when it was very, very warm and uh, our experience was not so strong with very warm vintages as, uh, as, mm -hmm. as we are now, because now we know that it's a little warmer compared. Uh, so uh, we had we, we make a little uh, anticipate harvest because the working process was over there. But we found out that uh, the tannins were, were very bold, but not very refined because they were not waiting a little longer in the vineyards in order to get a little softer. And uh, so we, in 2003, for example, if I still drink the wine, the tannins are strong, but not as elegant as the I in 2004. Because in 2004, the evolution was different, and they had the time to get a little water in the vineyard, not only the same. It's important mm -hmm. to get this, uh, this uh, process of refinement tannins all through the vineyard before yeah. harvesting. No, they're beautifully, they're really beautifully tailored wines, I, I, I find, really seamless. Um, and it's, it's interesting with the, the 16, if you, if you get this box at home, because you, you can see, as well as this lovely uh, cherry fruit that you find um, in the Grignano wine, now because the wine is, is a year on, you have this uh, beginning of this meaty, meatiness and nuttiness that comes as the wine ages, and it's a lovely, adds a, a wonderful complexity and, and depth of, of flavor. So even if they're the most vertical, here we begin to see this lovely uh, profundity, this depth um, of, of flavor and, and uh, a sense of weight. But it's kind of strange. It kind of defies gravity, really, because it's, 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 uh, there's weight, there's intensity and density, but without, uh, without being heavy um, in the mouth. 
All right, so and that's different. interesting to, to, to hear you speak. Also, we were talking about how, how you're planting higher as well. There's, there's this sort of idea of, of you know, things that are changing in, in the county of Wolfina area. I'll just say, well, I'm, I'm you know, looking at you drinking and it's it, it tasting there and it's fascinating. We have people writing in saying, I want a glass. <laughs> 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 Green yellow, the best fancy I've ever tasted, nobody says. And we've got the buy wine uh, people from, from Tuscany have tuned in and saying they're interessante. So they're listening to us. They're not. They're listening to us speak in English about their wines. It's fascinating. Maybe we should move over now to, to the left bank. And uh, thank you for, for waiting in the wings. And uh, thank you, Cesare. Thank you, Tomasa. We'll, we'll hear from you in a little while again. Um, Federico, Salva Piana. Federico, thank you for joining us this evening. Maybe if you could describe to us about Salva Piana, uh, the winery, and, and the two wines that you're presenting to us this evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to explain Salva Piana. Salva Piana, it's uh, an old family owned property. It's in the Giuntini family since 1826. We currently own 250 hectares of, vine of land, 60 under vines, mostly cultivated with uh, Sangiovese. More than 90% is cultivated with Sangiovese. And also we grow olive trees. We have uh, something like 30 hectares of uh, olive trees from which we produce extra virgin olive oil. And Serra Piana uh, started to farm organic all the vineyards in 91, 92. We mostly produce two wine, the Chianti Rufina and the single vineyard Reserva. Uh, the Chianti Rufina, the, 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 the Serra Piana is a little bit uh, in, in the middle of, of the appellation coming down from north, where Colognole and Frascole are. We are just in front of Grignano. We have a very good benefit from the river Sieve, because we have this very good breeze at sunset that makes the microclimate, uh, especially the difference in temperature between night and day, very dramatic. So the, the ripening is very slow, but very constant during the summer. Uh, our soil has a little more clay than other parts of Chianti, but they have very rich in uh, rock, in rocks, in uh, calcar. So it's a mix of uh, clay, limestone, and uh, the main rock is alberese. This kind of soil, uh, like mostly a little bit everywhere in the appellation, except in the highest part where you have the schist, the galestro, like a little bit in Frascoli, we don't suffer too much the warm season. Mm -hmm. So the problem of climate changes for Rufina is still not a big issue. It's an area where we suffer more rainy vintages, like 14 or 2002. But also it's an area that gives very good freshness and very good elegance and longer aftertaste to the wines. I, I've been uh, making wine in Serra Piana since 87, and I must say that the last vintage is the main issue. is not the quality, but it's the timing mm. and what's happened during the summer. It's the timing of uh, canopy management, the timing of drop fruit or not drop fruit, uh, like green harvest, and the timing of picking the grapes. Because the main issue is to make wines that are very well balanced and with very good fruit, but not too much alcohol. The major problem, a little bit all over the wine world, is that we are having too much high alcohol in the wines. So we, the first wine that we are going to taste is uh, Chianti Rufina 2018. This is uh, the wine that we produce every vintage. It's a kind of a business card for a, for a property because it's a wine that have, uh, thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a wine that have very good uh, price point as well. It's 95% Sangiovese and the rest is a, 
is a blend of canaiolo, colorino, and a little bit of malvasia nera. This wine is made with a blend of all the vineyards, except the two single vineyards that we produce by themselves. And 18 is a very good example of Chianti Rufina on the fresh side. You have lots of red berry fruit, good sweetness due to the summer. The summer was uh, very challenging, especially at the beginning of the season. We got uh, lots of rain, especially in May, Ma May, June. So there was lots of work in terms of canopy management, in terms of keeping the grapes healthy. But then the rest of the summer was not too warm, very cold nights and very late picking grapes. So the, the 18, it doesn't have big body, but it's very good freshness. It's like a, a little bit like a Pinot Noir village, Bergamy village, but very simple, simple but not stupid. Simple but with very good drinking and very good fine ripe tannins and long after taste. This is a wine that can be very good with appetizer, with pasta, and even with pizza. <laughs> and then uh, Emily, yeah. Emily will, will explain much better than myself. <laughs> and we also have this this wonderful, wonderful single yeah. vineyard. Do you want to tell us about this as well, Federico? Yeah, that, I said the Vigneto Erti because I was sure that Emily and you probably never tasted before. No, it's uh, a wonderful surprise. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh, it's the first release of a single vineyard, 100% Sangiovese. It's, uh, it's a piece of land that we bought in 1998. And it was the first time that instead of selling land, we were able to buy land because like many old properties in the bad years, like the 60s and 70s, to keep the winery running, my adoptive father was obliged to sell small pieces of the property. In 1998, we bought this uh, wonderful podere in what we call the Concador of Chianti Rufina. <laughs> it's in, in Pontassieve. It's a little bit on the right bank, uh, anyway. Uh, it's uh, it, next door to Iveroni, uh, Remole from uh, Frescobaldi, and another producer, Cereto Libri. It's the top of the, of the hill. It's much different from what we have here in Serra Piana. Soil is much rich in iron, much rich in calcar, and it reflects a lot in the wine. It's a southeast facing vineyard, a little bit lower, so the wine is a little more rich and ripe. It tastes a little more graf graffiti and a little more ematic, uh, but yet have the same elegance of all the Rufina wines. Fascinating. And 60, and 16, we wait, we plant the vineyards in 99. Mm -hmm. We use most of the grape we still use for the Rufina. And we started to select in 19, in 2013 as a single vineyard. And then we see 14 was not good enough, 15 we didn't like enough. And then 16 was really the benchmark vintage that we were looking for. And this is the first release. It's still a small production. And we hope to increase. It's much how different. Bottles? How many bottles, Federico, of the single vineyard? Uh, uh, right now, it's only three thousand bottles. Okay. But the vineyard, the vineyard is six hectares, so there's a good hope to grow. Wonderful. We'll look forward to hearing hearing Emily's thoughts on on both of these wines. And thank you for presenting Silver Piano to us. Um, thank Cosimo. you very much. <laughs> Let me go over to Cosimo of of. Hello. Flash. Hi, Cosimo. Thank you for joining us. Tell us about tell Thank us about you. your your family's winery. Yeah, I'm from Frascoli. I'm Cosimo, and I'm just the second generation. Uh, so Frascoli Winery is not uh, an historical Chianti Rufina winery. Uh, it's, it was born in uh, 1992 when my parents married. Uh, they found this uh, beautiful place to. Uh, to grow the, the vine and uh, they found some vineyards yet in uh, uh, when they, they arrived here and they start to, to 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 try with different clones of Sangiovese and they started to plant uh, 
many other uh, vineyards. We we have uh, about uh, 15 hectares of uh, vineyard, and from the 1999, we are in uh, organic uh, uh, production. And um, so our uh, philosophy is uh, to to express uh, frascoli. Uh, uh, our soil, our climate, and Chianti Rufina, uh, Chianti Rufina, um, the, the power of, of this, uh, this, this area. Uh, mostly is uh, the, the, the vineyard are mostly Sangiovese uh, vineyards. Uh, we have uh, uh, also a little uh, vineyard of white uh, wines, uh, and, uh, uh, but the, the biggest uh, production is, uh, is uh, Chianti Rufina and Sangiovese. Uh, we we are located so if you follow the river the the Sieve River after Vignano, Silvapiana, Colonia, uh, you find Frascole uh, at the end of the Chianti Rufina uh, area. Uh, we are at about uh, 400 500 meters above uh, sea level, so uh, pretty high, and uh, is a um, is a different. Uh, uh, part of the Chianti Rufina, if we want, because we are quite high, and we have uh, uh, the influence of the uh, uh, Falterona mountain, a uh, mountain that is about uh, 1,600 meters above sea level, just uh, um, back our little hill you know, where, where we are. Uh, so the, the fresh area uh, the, is a fresh area, is, is a fresh uh, climate, and uh, uh, it's also uh, quite particular because uh, we have not so many rain during the years that helps uh, uh, to the disease that you can have uh, uh, in the in the vineyards and uh, uh, also uh, our area like the Chianti Rufin in general is characterized by uh, a big difference uh, during uh, uh, in temperature during night and day in the harvest period that help to have a very elegant wine, uh, good quality wine, and our wines, like uh, uh, Tomas also told us, uh, are wine that you can uh, keep uh, in the time, drink after many years. Uh, they are uh, really, really enjoyable. And uh, tonight, so this evening, uh, we are uh, we are uh, tasting. You are tasting. Uh, Two of our wines, yes, thank you. <laughs> the Chianti Rufina, so our um, entry level Chianti Rufina, uh, that is uh, uh, mostly Sangiovese, uh, like with a uh, little uh, part of uh, Colorino and Canaiolo to hold the uh, um, grapes that uh, to, to hold the uh, Tus Tuscan grapes. Uh, so the Chianti Rufina. Uh, is um, is made uh, is fermented in uh, uh, concrete containers and uh, spent uh, uh, ju just one year like one year in the big uh, wood container during the uh, the vinification then is uh, we, we do a blend a selection uh, in, in uh, another one, another time in the, the concrete container and then uh, bottled. Uh, the other wine is the Riserva, the Chianti Rufina uh, Riserva, that come from the, the best uh, Sangiovese grape of our uh, our uh, our property. And uh, uh, the vinification is uh, a little bit different. So it's spent about the, the fermentation is uh, in the in the wood container. And then he spent about uh, one year uh, in uh, in the barrels, then blended again in a concrete container and uh, and bottled. Okay. So, you, Emily, what are you what are you feeling about these these left left bank wines and one right bank wine put in there as well, just for good measure by Fred and Nico, just just to keep us on our toes. Oh God! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm I'm uh, so much I want to get into according to what uh, the, the last two have just said. I love what Federico said about um, simple but not stupid because that's exactly how th these uh, Anata wines is such a wonderful. They're so approachable and fresh and and so drinkable, um, but then they're, they're not 
they're not lazy wines either. They're really um, intelligent uh, wines. Lot, they've got a lot to say. But I also, um, <laughs> Federico, I can't. I visited so many times, and I'm so embarrassed that I I never let that sink in that there's so much clay in the the vineyards because you normally say associate um, vineyards with uh, more clay soils to heavier um, wines with more weight. Uh, kind of more body and these wines are, are so deft and so light and um and, and perhaps that's now i understand due to its its position where where we are in chianti rufi now and the kind of a bit further north closer to the apennine mountains and all that mountain fresh air and i was wondering I, how far from the sea are you i know you have the river the effects of the moderating effects of the river but is the sea far away is it is that a silly question how far would you be from the sea do you think in in, in kilometers as the crow flies I think it's, I think we're quite distant. I mean, we're, yeah. we're very inland, so I, I don't know. There's no, there's no. Maybe, <laughs> by the way. maybe, maybe he'll, he'll, he'll come back, but for the time being, we've lost Rodrigo. Oh, so. that's a shame. No, it was, it, 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 they're really, because for me, when we were talking about right and left bank, I, I did see it, like there was a connection between the first two and, and these second two. Um, so they're both 18, which um, turns out to be a really lovely uh, vintage. And they, they're both for me really hallmark. Oh, cool. oh, <laughs> Better because <Yeah>. that. <laughs> and so, so Federico, you were saying about the green harvest. So that's when you you take grapes off in June or so, or, or July to to concentrate the fruit you have there. So now you're looking at maybe not taking we, off fruit in the, doing that green harvest, so that there's not so we, much we, concentration. We 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 don't do anymore. We probably the only vintages or the recent vintages that we did green harvest was 2014, but that was oh. due to the to the question of the heavy rains of July. Of course, the delay, yeah. The, the, the ripening. Otherwise, the idea of many producers nowadays is to have uh, a bunch more to delay the ripening of a few of a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 instead of concentrate and bringing the, the, the grapes indoor too early. Right, right, right. Mm. I have to go very quickly. My son needs to do uh, no, yeah. <laughs> He wants to join me and Emily. That's what we're hearing. Uh, so, and these the interesting comments from Emily about the wines being being very deft and uh, very very nimble in the way that they are presenting this evening. Um, we have Roberta who's saying hello from San Diego, California. We love Rufina wine here, so that's a that's a thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's why we do these sessions in the evening so that people can join in wherever they are oh. in the states. Um, so um, these are, these are very interesting wines that you're presenting. Uh, Emily's going to be back now. I'm wondering okay. what, you're, what what are you feeling about the the single vineyard that uh, that that's, that Federico snuck in here as, as a right bank example. <laughs> this is uh, Federico. So the Buccia Chiale is is your. Uh, so how does Main it work? Now? This is just going to be a single. It is right. well, for for many years. At Sebrapiano, we were looking for a new single vineyard to make a different Sangiovese, but we have not, most of the land around the winery, around the villa, and the differences were not so strong as we wanted. So when we were able to buy this piece of land in the municipality of Pontasieve, completely different soil, different area, different ripening times, and we saw there was a high quality because it's really an amphi amphitheater and they, they were already good producer around there. There was Iveroni, there was Cereto Libri, Remole. Il Capitano is a little bit higher up, they even in a much better position. So we were really involved in, in the project. So mm -hmm. if, if Buscerchiale was the project of Francesco Giuntini, my adoptive father, and Franco Bernabé, Erki is more me and my sister and Franco Bernabé still project to make something different. Yeah. And also, uh, speaking honestly, we also needed a little bit of high high end wine. So we we play the game of a little bit of high price wine. Mm. And this was a great vintage too for you, the sixteen. 
Because they say, of course, Italy 16 was a great vintage. Yeah, 16 was a, the best vintage to start with. My yeah. Superhero. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was when I was tasting this wine, I was thinking about how this has such a. There was a quote I think from Nicholas, no Hugh Johnson, who says that the wines of these wines make make contacts all the way down. One second. They yeah. make contacts all the way down, and it's true. Like you feel the wine in in in. in when you're smelling, when you're tasting, and when you finish the wine, this, what you mentioned also, this aftertaste that's really um, persistent and long. And, and, and for those at home, um, it, it's something to think about once you swallow the wine, that if you can still taste it, it's a really great sign of quality. And, and here there's a wonderful, long, persistent um, flavor. And it's such a, yeah, it's, I haven't I haven't tried this wine. You were right, Federico, so it's really a pleasure to be, no. to, to be, to be tasting this. It's really wonderful complexity, but again, as with all the roofing wines, there's this complexity without uh, without uh, heaviness or weight. There's it somehow manages to be still have this wonderful kind of arc uh, lightness of touch, but without um, without being heavy. I don't know how it packs it all. It packs it all in, but this is a, a really beautiful example. It's a very yeah. valley, I think. The, the Valley of uh, the County of in our area, I think, is 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 one that I would recommend our viewers to to explore. Uh, you know, we Tuscany is famous for many many wine regions. Some are better known than others, and County Rupa is definitely one that warrants everybody. Maybe if we could just bring everybody back on on the screen and thank all of the wine no. for, for taking part. And uh, thank you, Emily, Emily's son as well, he's, he's joined us. I know he likes to, so he's a very sociable little boy. Um, <laughs> he loves to be involved. Uh, Sammy didn't do the job. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, we mention again that there's, there's the, the wine box that's available. If anybody's tuning in, we've got a few final comments. We love Grignano here in the USA. To <laughs> Mystery lesson. Buonasera a tutti da New York City. In New York City, amano vino di Italia. Merry Christmas. And with that, maybe we could bring up the last slide, which is a nice, a nice view of the saying happy Christmas to everybody. So thank you very much to Emily O'Hare, a wine educator in Samira, for joining us this evening, to the Canti Rufina Consortium. And, and to the four wineries for, for coming along and joining us. Thank you all. And please do buy some Chianti Rufino wine and enjoy it and explore it this Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. Bye-bye, everybody.